This is Ken Honda, and he might be the happiest millionaire on earth. Today, I'll explain why and how so you too can bring a little more zen to your money and a lot more happy to your life. And this is Ken Honda's book, Happy Money. It's one that I come back to annually because it's jam-packed with incredible money lessons and insightful mindset and life lessons in general. And maybe it's about time I buy a copy instead of getting it from the library. Anyway, inside the book jacket, it states, what Marie Kondo's life-changing magic of tidying up did for your living space, Ken Honda's happy money will do for your wallet. And that's true, but it goes well beyond your wallet. This book is about how to live a happy life in general. Yes, money plays a huge role in it, but it's not how much you have, it's your attitude about money, how you earn it, how you spend it, and how it aligns to your purpose and values. Today I bring you 10 of my favorite lessons from Ken Honda's book, Happy Money, in hopes that you too can become a happy millionaire or at least happy with your money in general. Don't miss the last lesson. It's a critical minder that you need to hear. I just know it, so stick around. My name is Frankie, like, like, sub, sub, and let's get to it. Lesson number one, money EQ is far more important than money IQ. Money IQ is your intelligence quotient. It's financial intelligence, which you are growing when you're learning about saving, investing, compound interest, budgeting, retirement planning, and the like. That's the book smart stuff. Money EQ is more important. It's the emotional quotient, the emotional intelligence required to have the right attitude and even excitement towards money. It's street smarts and more. It's what dictates how you think, feel, and what you do with your money. It's mindfulness. And when you optimize your money EQ, you are going to work more creatively, spend only on things you find important, and live in the present with gratitude. Pretty much every lesson ahead is related to money EQ and mindset because many money mistakes are related to emotions. Number two, trust the flow of money as energy. This is another lesson that sets the tone here today. First off, money is just an object. It has neutral energy. You are responsible for the charge of energy you infuse your money with. Your overall attitude towards money, positive or negative, impacts how you handle your finances. A simple way to infuse it with positive energy is to say arigato, or rather, thank you. Thank your money when it comes in and thank it when it flows out. Trust the flow of money and you will attract it. Another way to infuse it positively is by donating to a charity or just giving gifts in general. This leads to happy money flow and it also gives you confidence that you have enough. Speaking of confidence, he says, people who are confident aren't that way because they're rich. They are rich because they are confident. Happy money leads to contentment and joy, but unhappy money causes fear, pride, and resentment. So how do you earn, save, and invest happy money? I'm glad you asked. Number three, earn happy, honest money. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. Making money means being true to yourself and being able to share your abilities with the world. As a result, you spread joy everywhere you go and the money you receive is simply an expression of your clients or workplaces gratitude. Passionate and enthusiastic people attract money. Finding a purpose that you believe in from the heart and then working towards that purpose to earn money creates a very positive flow of money. Earning money by doing something that brings you joy is an excellent way to find happiness. If you do so, when you spend, you'll actually be happy because you get to go do more of what you love to earn that money back. It can take decades to find an area of work that you enjoy and where your skills can shine, but don't give up. Seek out passion and purpose with your work. It is very worth it. Number four, save happy money. If you know why you're saving money, you are more likely to stick with it and more likely to end up reaching whatever your specific financial goals are, especially if those goals align with what's most important to you. For example, a passion or hobby, self-development or education, or experiences like a family vacation. Save for the life you want to live. Start with what you value, put a price on it, and work backwards to create your savings path to success. Always set your sights on specific goals. This will help you achieve your financial objectives more quickly and easily and happily. Number five, invest happy money. When it comes to investing, find a cause you care about and invest in that. This could be your own business, activities you enjoy, a charitable cause, or even stocks and businesses that align with your values. Investing money in things that are important to you not only makes you feel great, it infuses your money with happy energy and causes it to flow positively. The important deciding factor in becoming a happy little millionaire is to align your money with your values and convictions. Number six, practice gratitude. Research shows that practicing gratitude enhances your mental and physical health. It's also a key 
to financial success. Honda believes that appreciating what you have opens the way to happiness. The simplest thing he recommends is to express thanks when it comes to money. As I said earlier, when money enters your life, say arigato or thank you. Express gratitude when you spend money as well. Thank those that have helped you get to where you are and show appreciation to those who might help you in the future. You might be surprised at how much more money and support flows your direction when you express gratitude often because what you appreciate appreciates. Gratitude also helps you understand that you have enough because when you get in this cycle of wanting more, it becomes harder to recognize what's most important in your life. Number seven, don't fear money. Most people have a difficult relationship with money because the way that they earn it and spend it are unhealthy. Often this stems from being hurt by money in the past, which leads to fear. To develop mindfulness and confidence, examine your views on money, as well as the people and circumstances that have shaped them. Further, stress stemming from money is likely because you don't trust the flow of money. When you spend it, you fear it won't come back. When you earn it, you fear it's not enough. It doesn't matter how much you have or make, it's your feelings about money that determine your wealth. We think our fears are about money, but ultimately it's the future and change that we're afraid of. Don't earn it because of anxiety. Don't save money because you're afraid of the future. You can either use your money well or allow money to use you. Number eight, develop an abundance mindset. An unhealthy attitude about money stems from a scarcity mindset, which is the belief that resources and opportunities are scarce. There's not enough for you to go around. With this mindset, we're less likely to collaborate with people, celebrate the success of others, or feel good about ourselves. You need the opposite mindset, an abundance mindset. It's the belief that there is ample money, resources, and opportunities out there for everyone, including yourself. Knowing there is enough is the mindset that unlocks wealth, confidence, and happiness. True abundance flows from energy. Money is flowing everywhere if you're open to it. Number nine, fast money versus slow money. How people get their money fast and easy or slow and steady is how they tend to lose it. People who earn money quickly tend to lose it quickly because they're not prepared for it. Their money EQ is lacking. On the other hand, people who become wealthy slowly and deliberately over time tend to keep money for a long time as well. Personal finance itself is a skill that must be fostered through experience and tough lessons. Embrace the process of learning and planning. Get rich slowly works especially well because you'll preserve it equally well if you're patient as you earn it. Patience really is the shortcut. Number 10, buy more time. Buy time to do the things you enjoy and pay to delegate the things that you don't. Far too often, we sacrifice our free time just to save a little money. This could be driving across town to save a buck on gas, spending an hour on the phone to dispute a $5 charge, or spending 10 minutes squeezing the toothpaste tube. <laughs> Married friends of mine once explained to me why they pay for cleaners weekly. It's simple. This gives them hours back to spend with their baby. When the cleaners come on the weekend, they leave the house for a couple of hours of valuable family time. And I plan to steal this someday. Think about ways you sacrifice large chunks of time to try to save a buck. How could you delegate? How could you buy back your time? And what would you do with it? I would honestly love to know in the comments. When people focus on their time rather than their money, they act like scientists of happiness, choosing activities that promote their well being. Here's a summary before I get to some final thoughts. Number one, money EQ is more important than money IQ. Two, trust the flow of money as energy. Three, find your gift or purpose and work that aligns with it. Four, save happy money by knowing what you're saving for. Five, make your investments match up with what you value. Six, practice gratitude. Seven, don't fear money. Eight, develop an abundance mindset. Nine, grow your wealth slowly to lose it slowly. And 10, spend money to buy back your time. I'd love to know which of these spoke to you the most. If you're dissatisfied with your life or finances, it makes little difference whether you're wealthy or you're poor. Even if you have all the money in the world, you'll likely still worry about money. There are many people who are rich but never satisfied, while on the flip side, many people live their best lives on average or below average salaries. Now you know why and how to have happy money, thanks to Ken Honda. There's tons more in the book. I highly recommend it. Thank you for watching. Arigato. And don't forget to brush your teeth.